This is the Lector Academy webinars in cooperation with Element 14. <coughs> My name is Jan Buiting. I am the editor of the Lector magazine. And being the editor of the magazine, I was very happy and fortunate and, and not a little proud <laughs> to be able to print an Android I.O. board on the cover of the um, magazine, a recent copy of the magazine. And inside the magazine, there's a ton of details on an Android I.O. board. But I, I am weak compared to my guest for this, this session, Albert Jan Veldhuizen, who is to come uh, all the way uh, from The Hague in Holland to join us for this, uh, this webinar on his project. Um, there is a lot of information in the magazine, of course, and uh, Albert Jan will be going even deeper and also show some applications and stuff. But today we'll be on smartphones, Android phones like this simple one from myself, but much more on this particular board, which I'm uh, showing to you. It, this is the Android I.O. board developed by uh, Albert Jan for this uh, lecture, for this webinar. I've been talking way too much already for the beginning of the show. Like Jan said before, we will start with a little video. To oh, show hooray, you, hooray. Um, what it actually is about. Uh, a word says more, or a picture says more than a thousand words, they say. So, yep. a movie would even say more. It's uh, an I.O. board which you can connect to an Android device with uh, 22 I.O. lines for your project. And on board you have some LEDs and a touch sensitive uh, switch and a an, uh, thermometer resistor. Uh, it can connect to each other. You see, if you press a uh, button, you will actually switch on the LED or mm -hmm. you will switch, switch it off. Mm -hmm. um, can you also dim them? Obviously. Yes, you can oh. dim them. There's hey. a pulse width modulation on it, so if Brilliant. you have a nice yep. uh, slider on your uh, mm -hmm. on your app, mm -hmm. seek bar is called. You can you <laughs> see have it brighter or less bright. Also, this is one direction. Of course, the I/O board can also send data to the device. It's, it's a capacitive sense uh, switch. Mm -hmm. So if you touch it, you see it's sent directly to the to the phone. No old-fashioned mechanical switches. Exactly, it's old-fashioned. And there's a temperature sensor. If you look, if you put your finger on it, the temperature actually will rise. Um, there are different uh, ways of connecting from the Android device to the Android I/O board. You see here mm -hmm. the options: Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and two different USB modes. Uh, oh, wow. Software, Java programming, uh, I made a library for you, so you don't have to go into all the details of programming, you get just five simple functions uh, in which you can control completely the IO, uh, Andro Android I.O. board from your app. So that's in short actually mm -hmm. almost a promotion Yes, promotion movie. Movie. It, it does a good job, uh, <laughs> Elvijan, El El yeah. So, yeah. Uh, be before actually I go mm -hmm. into the presentation, uh, to actually give you an impression why I made some de uh, design uh, choices. Yeah. Maybe why did I design it at all? Why yeah. did I actually uh, went to the trouble? Yeah. And so, Albert Jan, you know, this, a smartphone like this, an Android device like this, th there's, there's a lot of books already on the market explaining how to program apps. Yeah. And that, if I can summarize that, that's kind of the inside programming of the app. It stays inside the, the, the mobile phone or the app, the Android yeah. device. Now, what you have done is actually break out the connections to yeah. everybody. Exactly. So, if, if I want deep access for I.O. applications with my Android telef telephone or mobile device, I would choose your board. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, mo many people can write apps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the apps, That's they easy. are very happy. Uh, <laughs> even children do that uh, very well as well. But uh, making extension hardware yeah. for an Android device is a different story. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, why did why did I design this Android I/O board? It's um, I think we all have been designing a lot of electronics, and especially yeah. with digital electronics, I think always the problem was the user interface. Uh, the last let's say 15 years, the only thing I had was the 16 times 2 characters LCD uh, display, very small, uh, hardly to read, mm -hmm. some little buttons in which you have to make some menu which nobody understood. Uh, so you had a brilliant project doing all the things you want to do, but the user interface was yeah, yeah 
Yeah. Not it is. really professional. Yeah, it is. It is. It, is an, uh, it was an old school, and, and we call yeah. it ug ugly now. Old yeah. school interfacing from the device to you, yeah. and from you in, into the device. Exactly. It's, it's a smartphone, an Android device like this has all this packed inside. Yes. Yeah. All everywhere. All everything is included with paid for it. It costs next to nothing. So why yeah. not use all this I/O power and use the friendliness? for real I.O. extensions. Yes, basically. that was yeah. exactly the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, you, when tablets, the cheap Android tablets and the cheap phones came uh, to the market, they were below 100 euros. They could all the stuff I just described. Yeah. Color display, touch screen, actually a lot of processing power even. Uh, internet access, you could do uh, social media, everything. Mm -hmm. um, so actually that was the solution. But like you said, yeah, I once opened an, uh, an Android tablet and <laughs> it didn't work afterwards uh, anymore. So how do you connect to your Android device? Mm -hmm. So the thing you have to use is the standard communication channel. So you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth uh, and USB in two different modes. Uh, but they're not all the Android devices you can buy have, have them all. Some, uh, they almost all have Wi-Fi, but uh, tablets, the cheap ones don't have often Bluetooth. And phones often don't have USB, at least not the USB in, in which you can connect to outside world. So that's why I wanted to make it flexible. I wanted to, like you said, break out, have I/O pins, like a Raspberry yeah. Pi has, but it has a user interface. Uh, have those pins to your and Android device. Yeah. And and that's why yeah that, that's why I designed it. And it has to be flexible since you want to use it with uh, a, a smartphone with yeah. Bluetooth, and you want to use it in a tablet which only has maybe USB. Yeah. Plus, of course, you want to give that secret, all the power inside the Android device to engineers to show where are the pins, where are the lines, yeah. what can I access, what, how can I get information into the device and from from the yeah. device. That is a mystery to many people. Yeah. So we were very happy to have. You in a magazine with your Android I/O yeah. board, yeah, and yeah. not an app board, but an I/O board. Yes. We want, we always want to expand things and make things open at the yeah. level for yeah. everybody to access. Okay, exactly. And so, actually, the idea is, if you have an electronics project, you can just put in this board. Mm -hmm. uh, you make an app, mm -hmm. and you have actually you can use your user interface. Um, yeah. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Actually, it's I think we almost went through it. It's 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 universal and flexible. That's I think the two words I, I, I want to really say about it. It's a universal and flexible connection to the outside world of your Android device. Uh, I already said you can use all the communication channels. You have 22 I/O lines, just not just digital I/O, but uh, ADCs, pulse width modulation, capacity sensing switching. Uh, encounter and there's even flash memory on the board, so you can even use it standalone, as for instance a data logger. Um, and I think what's quite important, you you also get an, a Java library. When I was uh, the, making the prototypes, I've really been I think for three months in the evenings, <laughs> I've been programming for three months to get just Bluetooth working. Yeah. It's uh, not, not that easy, is no, it? No, it's, it's, it's really tricky. Oh. It has also to do with that Android, uh, of course we are now much higher versions when I started uh, one half year ago. Uh, it was not stable, so it, 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 it took mm -hmm. a really mm -hmm. long time to get it stable. Mm -hmm. um, but it's now for all the Wi-Fi, USB, uh, Bluetooth, it's all in a library, so actually you don't have to think about it anymore. It's transparent. there, transparent, uh, just use a few simple functions, we come there on the end of the presentation. Okay. You don't have to think about it, it's, it, it's in the library. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, what can you do? It's actually, actually, like I say, you, you can use this user interface. That's, that's the first, that's the reason I, I did uh, design it. That's also the appealing element yeah. to many, you know, if you can slide on, on your smartphone, that is that gives a kind of power and control instead of yeah. a real normal slider, which is old fashioned again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, of course, you, you can, once you have a connection to your app, you can do more. I mean, and, and you have uh, you have processing power, you have storage. Uh, it's you have cheaply just four gigabits, sixteen gigabits, thirty-two gigabytes of, of storage. Mm -hmm. You can just use it inside your electronics project. Mm -hmm. You can use the internet connection because yeah, you can upload actually the data. If you measure something, let's say the temperature, you can actually real time upload it through your uh, mobile, uh, your Android device to the web. Yeah. So you can actually make real-time uh, mm -hmm. connections to your social media, web server, whatever. So you can actually what you do on the board, you can show to the world. 
Um, I also made um, at, uh, that you actually opposite around. You can actually also make a web server mm -hmm. inside your Android device. Yeah. So actually you can access from the outside your Android I.O. board. So yeah. it's, it's very flexible. Actually everything you can do with an, 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 a smartphone and, uh, and, and tablets, you can use now inside your electronics uh, project. Um, on the board, since yeah, um, it's also nice to have the board as some demonstration or yeah. some training. Sure. You have to uh, practice and get to get the grip on yeah. stuff and you know read the IOs and see your LED flashing. Yeah. Yeah. And actually that's the first thing you want to do. The, the famous yeah. the, the hello world hello for world IO and is blink, the blink LEDs. Blinking yeah. LED. Yeah. So that's why on board there are some uh, LEDs, some uh, um, temperature sensor to read out and, and the capacitive sensor uh, mm -hmm. switch. Mm -hmm. Just you can actually start playing around with it and, and let's see whether the app is working. And once you see that's working, then you have the confidence and you're really going to start your uh, yes. project. Of course, also opposite around, it's, it's also for educational purposes. Uh, I can imagine schools can just use it to get students. Uh, the, actually, then you don't need more because mm -hmm. uh, once you have the, 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 the LEDs uh, flashing and, and the temperature reading, actually, as students, you, you have done what you should do. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> fair enough. Yeah. A lot, like lot of potential. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Who's for? Like I said, for user interface, but you can actually use it for uh, for more uh, things. Like um, it's it's you get quite a lot of I/O standard. You get already the ADCs, you get already the pulse rate modulation. Oh, uh -huh. So you see, if you want to switch something with it, you actually don't need much electronics anymore. You can if you just get it out of the box. You only need to connect maybe a temperature sensor or mm -hmm. a uh, so solid state relay mm -hmm. and, and you're there. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to do fancy electronic stuff, you can actually really concentrate on Android programming and make a fancy app around it. So it's one side is targeted to complicated electronic projects, mm -hmm. but other sides, if you don't want to do quite complicated electronic stuff, you can actually concentrate on Java programming your app. It's also uh, quite, you get experience with it. Um, and the third thing actually, <coughs> there's a microcontroller on the board. Actually that one is, is doing uh, most of the stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's also a bootloader for the firmware on inside the Android I.O. board. So you can also almost use it as development uh, platform if you want to do some real-time yeah. uh, processing mm -hmm. because Android um, if you connect to the board and you get data, let's say the round time is roughly 100 milliseconds. So you cannot really do real time things, mm -hmm. near to real time. I mean, 10 hertz is quite okay. okay. If you want to do faster things, you can even change the firmware to do really fast things on, on, on microsecond level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, reasons for using it. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, I, you have already covered. Actually, most some, of it. Some of some yeah. uh, reasons to start using this uh, this board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah actually, I, I think I, I mentioned more. It's flexible. It's cheap. Yeah. And you can do a yeah. lot of fun about it. Java library is is, is the, the crux really yeah. uh, of a John, isn't it? That is that is a gem. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. it, it really saves you a lot of time to get a thing working. Um, maybe a little bit. What's on board? I already said there's yeah. a microcontroller. Um, maybe the big picture. Uh, how does it work in general? You send text commands from your Android device towards the Android I.O. board. It's mm -hmm. just plain text. Mm -hmm. We will see some examples yeah, later. Yeah, I've seen them in the magazine already. Yeah. Uh, the modules, the Wi-Fi module, the Bluetooth module, just are transparent. They receive it by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and give it on just serial uh, connection towards the microcontroller. So actually the module is really transparent. It's there to make a connection, but the microcontroller that one has to interpret the commands, that one has to uh, send the I.O. Uh, uh, and do all the stuff. So th the heart of the Android I.O. Uh, board actually is the microcontroller and the, the modules, they are there just to have the connection towards it. Mm -hmm. so this is the, the micro, I'm showing it yeah. on the camera. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it comes pre-soldered on the board, courtesy uh, ele Elector. Uh, Electrolabs, and uh, that's of course a difficult uh, IC to solder yourself at home. So, and here's another little chip. <coughs> so, if you get this board, order this board, you get the the, um, the ICs pre-mounted, if you like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. What, what 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 was your main choice, Albert Young? 
to yeah. go for pick pick 16. Um, is there any any particular reason at it, all? Uh, it's just I've experienced I've <laughs> okay. programming That's the usual all my <laughs> programming life with <laughs> stuff uh, micro. I know. Yeah. yeah, okay. It started with the famous sixteen uh, fair eighty four. Enough. Fair enough. Yes, yeah. the eighty four. Everybody's uh, yeah. favorite yeah. at the time. Yeah. yeah. So okay. actually, to be honest, I never programmed any other microcontroller. No. Okay. So uh, it's an easy choice as long as it's transparent. Well. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, there are a lot of different uh, possibilities for the for the module. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Bluetooth, you have the HC06, a cheap Chinese um, connector, the BL600 e yeah. which is described in the last in selector. Yeah. Uh, also the microchip RM41 or the 42, with different power levels. Uh, for Wi-Fi, you have also for microchip the RM171, the nice red one. I think most pictures you <laughs> yeah. always will see with the red yeah, one. The red one. It, it's just nice uh, on the picture. Uh, but also you have recently the quite cheap uh, Chinese one, the ESP8266. It's not working yet with the, uh, with the board, but that okay. will soon change. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be at some point uh, a working version with that cheap uh, yeah. module. Okay. Then you have two types of USB interfaces, the traditional USB host and the, the USB accessory, especially for Android. Uh, actually, it can uh, work with both. Uh, Elector has both modules for host and for USB accessory. Uh, so you can actually use both of them, uh, what you wish for. Yep. And there's, of course, some stabilizers. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah and stuff for the LTC and, and NTC. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was afraid that this was yeah, going to happen. Yeah, this is going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no. You don't really have to look at, uh, at the table on the right side. It's in Electro Magazine. Um, what's quite important is, um, and I just want in the next few slides mm -hmm. to give you a, an, an idea how it looks like. Yeah. Um, so you have 22 I.O. lines and the names of those I.O. lines are the, the normal naming uh, con uh, conventions, yeah. conventions yeah. for the PIC processors, mm -hmm. which is A0 to A7, yeah. B0, B7, C0, C5. Everything gets ex assigned to a port line. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you, communica you communicate with those uh, pins. So in, 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 the, in the command you give, you, you name the pin. Uh, the table is just there, I won't go, uh, go in there. Not all the uh, I.O. possibilities are available on all, pens, uh, all pins. So you have to uh, look what you want to and look up which pin you can use. It's also because the microcontroller only has several functions on several pins. So um, only the pulse width modulation is completely soft generated, software generated. So you can actually change the former if you want to have more of them, but it, it takes time. So actually yeah. then the, the whole frequency goes down. This picture to the right is, is something you have to remember. Uh, every pin, so there are 22 lines, 22 pins, yeah. have five registers attached. Uh, once you remember that, uh, I hope you will remember this after this presentation. <laughs> uh, I think things got clear because I, I, know, I know it gets quite confusing if you don't realize there are five registers attached to every pin. Uh, you have just the register to write the value, as, as if you have a digital uh, line, it's just you write zero or one, and if you put a one in there, it's a high, and if you put a zero, it's zero. Mm -hmm. um, and you have four uh, configuration registers. And if you look at the picture, uh, A0 is, mm -hmm. is, is, is the register yep. you write your value to, mm -hmm. and the other four, and which then there's just a zero, uh, or the number 0, 1, 2, 3, after it, so 800, 801, 802, 803, that are the configuration registers. Um, so in practice, you first configure a pin, so you write to mm -hmm. A00, and if you need other options, A01. And then once you've done that, uh, and the power is on, on, on the board, it's, it's configured, it's set, and then you just write A, uh, to A0 to put the value or read A0 to get the value. The, the commands to write a value to A0 is r the W from write mm -hmm. and the R from read. Again, remembering mm -hmm. that you are communicating basically with ASCII characters. Yeah, exactly. Letters or simple commands yeah. that you can read. Exactly. And understand. And, uh, and understand, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that gives also a kind of transparency to the whole system. So yeah. if a basic command set you can understand from recognizing read and write yeah. and store that sort of letter letter codes. Exactly. And it and is of course not the fastest way of communicating, no. but it is transparent and very very educational. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, also, you can just in once you uh, develop your uh, code, you can put in the the uh, um, the data uh, sorry the uh, ADB interface yep. uh, for the ones who has program yep. uh, apps, and you can actually see if you just put it as an as a logging. Mm -hmm. yep. You s can just see it. It was also in the, in, in the movie. I don't know. It yep. was quite quickly. <laughs> you just see all the commands coming by. So you really yep. see what you're sending, and you see really what you're getting back. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in order to write to the configuration uh, parameters, you need to set and get the commands. Also, uh, just for clarity, I, I, I gave different uh, names. Of course, you can say write A00, also would have worked, but just to make it clear, I gave them different uh, command name, so you really see the difference between the configuration and just the normal writing. To make it maybe more, I, I have for you two examples. Yeah. Uh, the first example on top of the, of the slide, uh, B0, the pin P mm -hmm. B0, uh, on the board there is the, the first LED uh, yeah. connected. Now, let's make it in digital I.O. and put it on and put it off. <coughs> you need actually, the first you see on the, you write from the app to the I.O. Yeah. you see on the slide. Yeah. S, which is set, configuration, B00, value 2. You have to know, and that's in the table, that mm -hmm. value 2 means uh, put it as digital output. Uh, but so then you configure the whole pin to digital output. And then it's, if you want to put an, uh, it high, you write 1 to B0. So you get W space B0 space 1. And actually it's put high. Uh, normally you don't get anything back. It would be a waste of communication. But if you, would, uh, if you put a debugging option on, on the Android I.O. board, you also will see the same command echoed, plus even whether it's connected or not, uh, successful or not. Uh, it's in gray on the, on the slide, but you will uh, see that anyhow if you program. <coughs> So it's, that's the, 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 the basic idea. You configure, you only have to do once, uh, it's powered up, and then after that it's just WB01. Mm -hmm. Se uh, second example, let's read out uh, the, the NTC resistor, the uh, temperature sensor. Uh, we, then we have to configure, it's on uh, B4. Before. Before. Yeah. Uh, put, put B4 as an ADC you should write value 3 to the configuration uh, register B40. Uh, Read it is RB4 and you will actually get a reply RB4. If the value is 18, you get 18. Um, okay. Yep. It's good to know the a it's, it's decimal, so 18 is the decimal value, not the hexadecimal. Not hexadecimal, yeah. it gets confusing, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Also to get it more re readable, uh, I think, mm -hmm. it's it also a choice you, mm -hmm. you had to make once you program the the Plus, it's probably easier to connect an app, a graphic app, showing yeah. some nice scale or whatever, exactly. 18 degrees, could be green or cool. Yeah. Um, and instead of having a complex uh, hexadecimal value and have to do the calculations exactly. again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so very few readers outside the lector read and speak hex hexadecimal these yeah. days. So <laughs> there you are. Yeah. There are a few. Yeah, there's a couple. Name and all this thing is... Uh, you see it's repeated, RB4, also yeah. in the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's because the answer is not synchronous, it actually is asynchronous. You send the command, mm -hmm. and it, it's not because of the, of the mic controller, actually it, 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 it directly responds. But the whole Android I.O. system, it, it goes a different way back. Yeah. And so it doesn't, uh, so you cannot have a function, or it's not wise to have a function, who writes and waits for it, because it, it will block your whole program. Yeah. It's not good programming. So if the answer comes back, you want you are very thankful for knowing what it originally exactly. did. Yeah. So you see RB418 coming back at, at some point. Okay. Yeah. So you don't wait for 18 and waste a lot of time. You do, yeah. can do other things. And with RB418 comes, you know, oh, well, that was my command for the exactly. ADC. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. That because, makes sense. Yeah, because you will actually put just out your requests all the time yeah. and you will get them yeah. in a different time frame. Yeah. Back. Or, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, there are a lot of parameters. I'm not really going through all of them. Uh, that's why you see on the picture just yep. a little bit cut out. It's, it's from the lecture uh, part three. Yeah. Part three, which will be in December. Yeah. Well, the, the <coughs> English issue is going to post a bit a bit later, but in the other issues, it's December. Yeah. Okay. Correct. In the third part of the article. Correct. Yeah. The yeah. third part, and I understood it also will be on the internet yep. uh, yeah, side of this yeah. table. Yeah. Uh, just to mention a few things, you can select, for instance, from the ADC, you can the reference voltage, you can 
uh, put statistics functions, you can put watchdog timers, all kind of stuff. It's all in the article also, but <laughs> there are a lot of uh, different options you can select. You all do that in that other, uh, in, in, in those four configuration registers. Uh, yep. Now, of course, the app programming already, yeah. Oberjan, we've, we've, we've discussed that, uh, mentioned that already, uh, just uh, in the per, per, as a peripheral activity, really. But, of course, you, at some point, you have to start programming your app and yeah. doing things on the screen. Can, can, can you show wh what you did on, in, in connection with that yeah. function? Yeah. Um, what you actually have is, is a library. It means you only have to um, include some uh, class mm -hmm. files. Yep. Uh, and then it's, it's a library, it's called Android IO functions. Um, and it has uh, actually only four members. Uh, and and they're st stated on the, on the slide. It's uh, three maybe yep. quite initiate, connect, disconnect. You can, I think, have an idea of what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. At initiate, you should say which module you want to use with IP address or which Bluetooth address mm -hmm. or which USB connector. Um, use connect and disconnect uh, quite often in a program. It also has to do with good Android programming. Every time your uh, app loses focus, and that is even when you uh, go to the settings menu, mm -hmm. you have to disconnect your, uh, your Android I.O. board. It's, bec it's because how Android works, because if you don't do that, you, your program can even be killed without that you have another chance to disconnect okay. <laughs> And the problem with that is that uh, the most modules only can connect to one, can have only communication channels at one. Mm -hmm. And actually that connection will stay and exist, so it means even though you cannot actually close your app anymore because it's already closed, your connection will stay. Correct. So that's why you should always disconnect on, uh, it's, it's called on, um, uh, if you lose, if you lose focus. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's just good, practi uh, good uh, progr Android programming practice. Mm -hmm. Actually the whole, so that's are just three, uh, three functions you put in on standard places. Uh, the whole thing you, with the send command, you just send a string of the uh, with the 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 ASCII data the, the 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 line I showed you. So, for instance, W space B zero yeah. space one. You just send that in the send command. Okay. If yep. you get a reply, it yeah. actually goes through. Uh, that has also to do with the Java programming in in Android. Uh, it goes through a message handler. So it actually, it comes through an other channel mm -hmm. uh, in uh, towards your app, and you have in your uh, app you have a me message handler. Uh, which actually receives all those kind of messages and there you can select all the, the messages uh, from the Android I.O. board. It also will give you the status of the, of the connection, so there are actually two different kind of messages. And there you process it and you can do something like, for instance, you saw in the movie, if I press the, the button, mm -hmm. it will actually send itself already like the, the button is pressed. Yeah. In the message handler it said, okay, it's now pressed, I put this uh, text in green. So that you put in your message handler. So actually what you also see, and it's also on the, on the next uh, slide, that um, the, the sending command is on a different place than the receiving uh, of the commands. It's really asynchronous. Uh, the sending you mostly do, from in, uh, for instance, from if you put a button, mm -hmm. it, it will call an on, on, on click button listener, and there you put send command. Or you have a thread which you know, goes all the time, and every one second you <laughs> say, I want to read out this temperature. The data comes back comp completely in other direction in your message handler, and there you actually in, uh, put it into your user interface. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that makes and this um, this picture I now put, uh, which you see on the right, more to scare you. Uh, <laughs> in the lecture magazine, yeah. it's actually also explained. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the first time when I programmed uh, the app, I, I thought it was really confusing, and it, it, it's just it's 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 because of the object-oriented programming of Java, and Java is 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 the programming language of Android. Uh, it means that co uh, functionalities and code, which actually are together or, sh or should be together in your thinking process, are scattered around the complete uh, source. So in the first time you're really scrolling up and down your 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 source, uh, it's not because you're bad programming. That's just how it is, and actually after a time you get used confusing. to it. Yeah. It can be confusing in the beginning, but once you, you understand uh, the structure, and it's also explained in the lecture and of course a lot of books how, how the structures are working, yeah. it, 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 you get used to it. But 
it's uh, I just warn you in the beginning it's confusing but you really get used to it how, uh, how much time over time did it did it take you approximately <laughs> you know to discover this connect and disconnect thing just to mention an example yeah and this sort of uh, difficulties with the uh, with finding what is where in Java how, how much time did, yeah. did you approximately spend on that discovering that well, I, I think if you uh, yeah you of course you're looking for mm -hmm. it's difficult to say may, maybe in f a few months in order okay. to you see it yeah. but you get actually in Electro you get a lot of demonstration programs okay. uh, so you can actually yeah. see and also see what's happening in the demo programs yeah yeah and uh, actually also to be honest I just wrote another program mm -hmm. I just actually used the last program and uh, copy, paste, copy paste almost everything. Replaced everything yeah. and then it works. Yeah. Because for instance, the message handler, 90% uh, of the code there, you will reuse. Yeah. And it's already on the right place. Okay. So uh, that's why once you understand the structure and you have done it mm. a few evenings, uh, you're not lot, you actually know where to look for. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's just something you have to remember. It's not all on the same place in the source, mm -hmm. although the functionality belongs together. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. Um, actually, then we come to the last part. I, mm -hmm. I think I, I don't go further into uh, app programming. It's, okay. it's something you yeah. really have yeah. to mm -hmm. practice and do. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I think it's, it's quite easy. Yeah. Once you know how to do it, it's quite easy. Yeah. Maybe another question is, uh, what, can you, what else can you do with it? Uh, I already said the most, the reason I programmed was just to have a user interface and, 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 and connect it. Um, but like uh, I maybe mentioned on f a few things before, uh, for instance, a, a nice thing you can do is um, instead of using an, uh, communication modules, nowadays you have those serial UE interfaces. Um, it's, it's actually also touchscreen, uh, color, uh, and you can then make a standalone uh, uh, function, uh, standalone board, because it already can just communicate with the, the uh, through the serial port. To, uh, yeah. to the UE. Mm -hmm. All those things is, uh, is, yeah, you can also use the, the microcontroller to, to really real time microsecond timing things. Uh, you can think of uh, quite complex uh, motor speed controllers. You can do uh, model uh, train controls. Yeah, How's yeah, that? Yeah. How is that? Yeah. People want to control their model planes from a, a smartphone Android yeah. device. We've already seen uh, a couple of these small quadcopters, the mini quadcopter stuff and drone stuff controlled from tablets and, uh, and, and smartphones. They don't have uh, the, 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 the old school yeah, radio control exactly. transmitter anymore. That's of course limited to Bluetooth range, but yeah, it yeah. gives a good example of you know, the power, uh, which we can't repeat enough, of these uh, extremely cheap yeah. smartphones we have. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could even think about uh, putting a Wi-Fi module in the... Uh, in, uh, yeah. Um, yeah router mode and then actually okay. arrange a little bit more but it, it's it's plenty yeah, of uh, plenty of connect options. connectivity yeah. 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 Um, yeah so you can actually also use it as a, some kind of development board for uh, programming micro uh, it, it has a bootloader which is in protected uh, memory so you cannot break the device it's uh, you cannot write over the bootloader unless you have a micro programmer but then you can uh, program it back um, so you can also uh, exp experiment with uh, MicroPick uh, uh, yeah. programming because it's just an also text-based bootloader which you can just put in your own firmware. Okay. Yep. Um, Albert Jan, we are going to look at some of the questions yeah. and yeah. I'm going to read them out sort of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, aloud to, uh, to, to sync everybody uh, in. So we had a question from, hey, that is Udo. Uh, Udo, your question is, <laughs> Um, you seem to have not foreseen a bus like like I Square C, yeah. uh, says Udo, or as an I/O bus to access the multiple devices. So, uh, Albert Jan, no I Square C bus or other bus yeah. device. Okay. Um, yes and no. That's an answer. Uh, <laughs> hardly tell you anything. <laughs> political answer. Yeah, political answer. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the the flash memory uh, on the uh, on the Android IO board is an uh, I squared C connection. Aha. So we could tap into that. We, you could tap into it, uh, but I th think that. Uh, at least when I made it, it's in firmware. So in the firmware, there is an I, I, uh, I square C mm. interface. Okay. But it's 
every I square C, or at least if you go for instance for the memory, it, it, it's different than for an older I, I uh, square C uh, yeah. uh, chip. Yeah. So they all have their specific addresses. A specific yeah. addresses, specific also how you go. For instance, the, the memory you can you can write a lot of words at the one time, and at, depending on what you write. Mm -hmm. So I th I think it's hard to make it universal. Yeah. Uh, also, it would take a lot of uh, uh, firmware code. And I didn't tell you, but uh, I was so enthusiastic programming that fir firmware memory is uh, full. That's why in the firmware you can actually make choices to yeah. leave out some yeah. kind of uh, okay. Um, things if you want to uh, further develop something else. Um, so I, I didn't think it was that easy to make universal uh, I2C uh, bus interface. Okay. Uh, and, and second uh, way, you can also say, yeah, you could, could have made a second serial interface. Um, I wanted to have uh, actually as an endpoint, the microcontroller as an endpoint. So from there you do the stuff. Of course, you can always step also in the serial communication. Mm -hmm. Um, so, if you have something else which you want to control and it actually does understand uh, the serial communication, you can tap in the serial communication. It's, that's probably easier than to try into the firmware to actually, because it's, 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 it's again one more step and it, it gets maybe too complicated also. Yeah. And Udo, as you can see, uh, Albert Jan has, has a follow up question. Uh, he has been thinking, of course. So. So we have to use some of the, the, the I.O. lines to implement a, a bus. Yeah, if you want to, I don't know which uh, bus interface, if it's I, 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 uh, I2C, I mm -hmm. think it's... Uh, I think uh, you can do it on a single uh, you, line, yeah, you but can you have to it. expand it, etc., etc. We've seen people yeah. doing it. Most people do it with two or even yeah, two, two I.O. lines minimum. Yeah. So, okay, fair enough, but it should be possible. Yeah. This, this PIC series, this PIC 16 series is totally open and available in terms of uh, support drivers, etc. on the internet. Yeah. And I'm sure that given the fact that we are actually looking at a small development board, really, uh, you could tap into the power yeah, of exactly. I, I, I square C. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anton um, was also among the winners. Uh, congratulations <laughs> again, Anton. Uh, as a question, is, is the whole stuff open source, uh, Elbert Jan? Uh, good question. Uh, yes, I think it is. It's of course uh, it's published through Elector. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's al almost a question yep. to you. Yeah, actually, it's uh, really. It is. Yes. Uh, it's, it's based on open source, and that's yep. also how yep. it is uh, supplied to yep. Elector. It is freely uh, distributable, so you can download uh, uh, codes and examples. Specifically, the library, of course, is all uh, open source. And in fact, we are going one step beyond that. We are inviting people to interact with us to you know, develop the software, expand it, show us updates, etc., etc. So that's highly recommended yeah. to everybody. Yeah? Yeah. Um, Patrick is moving to a uh, sort of question from Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Hayes. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey. Can you read it, uh, Albert uh, yeah? uh, When you connect hardware to the board, you have to lock down the use of the pins. Yes, is that correct? Um, Yes, the, if you next also the config the configuration is fixed for each application. What if I make two or more devices on the I/O board? Can I have the app for each one? Uh, so you want to run complex some? question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know whether I really understand the question, but if the question is whether you can run two apps at the same time to one Android I/O board. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's not possible because uh, at the end you can only set up one connection one at a time. And if you have two apps, they actually are independent of each other, so they cannot share the same connection. So if that's the question, then I think the answer is no. Okay. Um, because it's and also a transparent uh, communication channel, it's, it yeah. also doesn't know where to send it back. But, but then again, we, we have seen very advanced app programmers who are deep inside yeah. the Android uh, operating system and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if someone actually managed yeah. to do this but yeah. again please please be invited uh, I mean this this is this is not one-way traffic we're doing here yeah. at Elector. Eh? Yeah. we got a question from uh, Andreas Rudolph thank, thank you Andreas for uh, for joining us and asking your uh, your question and how do you achieve security security is a big issue these days of course yeah, yeah. how do you achieve security can't everybody ex access these text messages that you use for the communication? Yeah, How is it s yeah. secured? Uh, good question. I think uh, it's good that you also think about security. Um, 
Actually, there's no security inside. The only security with Bluetooth, once you have a connection, mm -hmm. uh, the Bluetooth itself is secured. Yeah, okay. So there's, you can. It's paired. Yeah, it's yeah. paired and you cannot listen to it. Yeah, okay. Uh, the same, of course, applies if you have Wi-Fi on a uh, uh, secure channel. Uh, the, the, it's itself secure, but of course, once you have some, someone on your subnet, it can just uh, connect to it. Okay. Uh, of course, USB is, is, is secure by itself since it's cable, uh, but it's, it's not highly secure in a way that nobody else can connect to it. Okay. That is not the intention of, of no. the project, of course. No. I mean, it's, it's again, it's educational. It's yeah. breaking up the Android telephone, uh, mobile device and showing where is my input and how can I access it with my homemade yeah, exactly. electronics. That's what we want. And we yeah. want to do the programming ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe one, you can actually put a firmware, so extra security layer, but yeah. it's, it's not in there. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, John, I think that um, sort of we are going to move to the close of the uh, session for this afternoon. It's been a brilliant uh, presentation with uh, good questions from, uh, from our viewers. Thank you very much. Um, Elbert John, final words from, from you perhaps for this afternoon? Uh, have fun with the Android I.O. board. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and o open it up, but not <laughs> just to replace <laughs> the battery or your SIM card. And we mean open it up for electronics people. Yeah. We want I.O. Input and output. I say goodbye, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining this webinar. Thank you, uh, Laureen at, uh, at Element 14, all the way in Chicago. Thank you from Electro Castle in uh, Holland. And we'll hope to see you back um, for the next webinar. Cheers and bye-bye, uh, everybody. Bye. -bye. bye.